What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be putting some performance parts on the Coleman DT200 drift tracks. So we got the drift tracks in the garage. Now we had a blast on these the one day we got to ride them, but uh, we feel like they need, of course, a little bit more power. That governor taking off is gonna help massively on these things because once the drift sleeves get good and warm, you could tell they started to grip better. So when you was in a long slide, you know, it start bogging the engine and you needed to rev it out a little bit more. This one is brand new. The other one right there is the one we beat on pretty hard that one day. So it's a good time to look over everything, make sure all the bolts are tight and do that first oil change on the other one. We're going to be removing the governor, doing 18 pound valve springs, and then the Go Power Sports Stinger header, which I like quite a bit. You know, it comes up and kind of aims at the ground. And we're going to use RLV mufflers on both of these. So I think it'll sound awesome. Of course, we use these on a bunch of our go-karts and it sounds uh, pretty amazing. And it's supposed to be, I think the RLV mufflers are supposed to give you the most power out of a go-kart muffler, I believe. Do not quote me on that. But, of course, all the parts and uh, links to all the parts are in the description below as well as these drift tracks. Uh, people seem to give me a lot of crap on the drift track video saying they're not worth $1,000. If you don't have a welder and the skills and the metal and a pipe bender to build your own drift track, these are definitely worth $1,000 and uh coleman may be lowering the price on them very soon we hope it's going to be before christmas we'll have to see what happens with them but i'm in love with these drift tracks so we're going to get some more power out of them and then we're going to go to the same location and do some crazy drifts and lonnie hasn't rode one yet so we'll film him you know his whole experience learning how to drift on one of these we're going to be removing the chain guard that's on these engines because go power sports has came out with a nice chain guard for mini bikes and go-karts and i think it'll look a little bit better than these uh, nothing wrong with these they're still a nice touch that they gave you that because you definitely don't want that chain which you shouldn't ever break it but if it did it could hit you in the back and that would hurt pretty bad like i said this one's brand new this one we beat on quite a bit one one side has a new drip not a new drift sleeve but like 50 percent life this one has about 25 percent so we are going to put a brand new fresh set of sleeves on this as well and also we're going to dress out the engines with those uh performance engineering bolt cups that we use on all of our builds so links to all this stuff is in the description below of course so uh, let's get to removing this engine and we can remove that governor and dress it up a little okay so we're going to start off by taking these wheels and tires off you can see i split a drift sleeve we wore this down completely so we're going to remove both tires because uh when the motor's off we are going to put new sleeves on these tires As you can see, we split it there and as well right there, almost all the way across. So we really put a hurting on these. These are four and a half inch or, yeah, four and a half inch wide wheels. So we're definitely gonna go with the big wide wheels and a little bit taller wheel. I think it just fit this drift track better. These are a little bit too skinny. Now we can remove this chain guard with an eight millimeter in the rear and two tens on the front. There is a plastic or a metal spacer behind the bottom bolt on the front of this uh, chain guard. That's actually made a little bit better than I thought. I thought it was going to be a lot more flimsy than this, but it's pretty decent. Uh, this will be in the part cell we're going to have soon because uh, I like the Go Power Sports one a lot better. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the muffler off while the engine's bolted because it'll be just a little bit easier. Got that old muffler off there. We're going to take the two 10 millimeter 
nuts off the air box so we can get to that throttle cable. You always turn your choke on, your fuel off, and that'll let the uh, air box slide off. And I always forget about this gas line up there. And there's also a vacuum coming off the, uh, the valve cover. Got that air box off, and of course that will not be going back on. So there's just a, you put a tin on this little eyelet, and it's got a Phillips head in it. And then we can just take this Phillips head out, or loosen it. All right. That throttle cable on hooked. These Harbor Freight uh, pliers are flat nosed and they're perfect for taking uh, master links off. They're like the best pliers. So now we should just have four bolts and nuts holding the engine down, just like a normal go-kart. I'm gonna see what size they are. So we got a 10 millimeter bolt with a 12 millimeter nut on it. Oh yeah. We're gonna have to take this ground off uh, because that's what grounds the kill switch. And then you have two longer bolts uh, and two short bolts on the engine. The long bolts go on the rear on this little chain tensioner. And these things are super handy. Then we just gotta unplug this uh, kill switch. And sometimes these things can be on there pretty well, but that one wasn't bad. Now we can lift this engine off, set it aside for now. We'll be modifying that in a minute. It looks like we had an oil leak actually on that engine. Uh, I'm guessing the side cover, which is okay because we're taking the side cover off. So we'll be putting a new gasket so we can see what was making that leak. So now I'm going to remove the clutch and then remove the remaining bolts out of the side cover. There's also a spacer on that shaft you don't want to lose. All these engines are bad about the cam sticking to the side cover. So I normally like to let all my engine oil bleed out and then I'll tilt it on its back towards the pull start and then I can pull that side cover off. Just in case the cam does come out, the tappets won't fall out. The oil actually didn't look too bad in this engine. Uh, sometimes Predators and other engines will have a gray look to them. Of course, we only have a few hours, but that's the perfect amount of break in how we rode this thing. and. Uh, people have different ideas on how to break an engine in, but this one should be about perfect. Get that side cover off there. The governor removal is going to be a simple governor removal, just like a Predator, and I have videos of that on the channel already. So we're going to pop this governor out and throw the 18 pound springs in this and we'll be good to go. got that governor arm out if you get the crank in just the right spot you can knock it down it's a lot easier if you take a dremel and cut the top section off that's sticking out of the block and it'll come out a lot easier make sure after removing it you get all the washers there'll be two on this arm on this particular engine make sure they're definitely or actually there's three of them but uh, make sure all the washers are out and then you can tap that hole and uh, put some red loctite so it won't leak any oil like i said there's a full video on how to remove governors on these engines it's no different on these common engines as a predator there's that governor arm and the spring i always keep the springs they're handy to make throttle return springs used for throttle return springs later so when taking the governor off there's this little gear in the back of the engine and there's a sprocket on the rear of the crankshaft that spins this you got to get this tiny little clip out you got to get that tiny little clip out and it can be a pain but the easiest way i have found to get these clips out is I take a flathead screwdriver and I the, the ring is split in the middle. So I put a flathead screwdriver on one side of the split 
hit it with a hammer you don't have to be super easy but hit it with a hammer and what that does it kind of kinks up the ring and allows you to be able to get either something like a pick like this uh i don't know if you can see that drop the ring but you can buy a set of these picks i'll put a link in the description where you can get them on amazon but if you get that pick up under there and pop that ring out then you can grab this gear with some pliers and uh any type of pliers and slide it right out now after you get this gear out you want to make sure you get the washer that's uh, left over on the back side of the engine this also can be a pain to get out let me see almost got it almost usually i use a little magnet and it's still kind of a pain to get this thing out if you got a magnetic screwdriver it may help a little fun fact if your screwdriver isn't magnet uh magnetized you can take a magnet off your refrigerator stick it on the shaft of the screwdriver and pull off do that a couple of times and it will make your screwdriver magnetized pretty handy some screwdriver kits actually come with a little magnet to do that so when i tap these governor holes i always make sure to put a rag inside on top of the crankshaft just to catch all the shavings from tapping this hole so you can see the tap is uh, sticking inside the block there if you can see Okay, and but it's super blurry so now we got that hole tapped and what i like to do is thread the tap out of the hole and then spray brake cleaner carb cleaner whatever you got handy down through the threads to clean up all that leftover uh, shavings out of the hole and then you can pull this rag out really gently so you don't drop any of those shavings inside the the block You can see all of our shavings are laying right there on that paper towel and didn't get inside the block. Now the tap I use is a quarter inch uh, bolt thread that is coarse threaded. So you can use fine or coarse. I always just use coarse because uh, I buy my bolts in in large quantities so I don't have to run back and forth to the parts store. So, so we pulled that spark plug out. Now we can pull the valve cover off with four eight millimeter bolts oh yeah now you can look down the spark plug hole when the piston gets all the way to the top you need to let it start going back down just a little bit you can see that our valves are ready to be adjusted so once we get the piston at top dead center let it go back down just a hair to let the compression release kind of turn off and then we can put a, a 14 millimeter on the inside adjuster and a 10 on the lock nut break that loose Come on, baby. Ow, that hurt. Okay, we got it. Now, you will have a lash cap on the exhaust side. The intake side on these engines do not have a lash cap. Take off the lock nut and the adjuster nut. I can pull the rocker out. Now, what I like to do, because everybody has rope laying around, you can buy an air kit to push air down in the combustion chamber to hold the valves from falling down on the piston. But I always just shove like some shoestring or any kind of rope in there to get behind the valve so it can't fall down all the way. And there's that little lash cap I was talking about. Actually, let me get it with a screwdriver. Actually, let me get it with a magnet. So I got that lash cap off there. Like I said, that's just on the exhaust side on these engines. These engines are really close to a Honda GX200. So I use this rope, you can see I've used it quite a bit. I burnt the end so it won't fray on me. And then we can just shove it down in there. And I always use a 90 or like a bent uh, little pick and just keep shoving it down in there until I can't put any more in the head. So to pop these valve springs out, you push on the hat and push down you can see how it's got a small notch there and a big one there that's for the valve to push through and then lock down right there okay you can see the thickness difference between the new springs and the old springs i can compress these quite a bit but these i can barely budge so that's the difference these will hold up in a lot higher rpms just gonna set them down there let me set the cap back on Push in and lock it into place. Now we can set that lash cap back on the exhaust valve, making sure it gets all the way seated down in there. And you have installed 18 pound valve springs. 
Now we can take our rockers and slide down our adjuster nuts and we're just going to snug those up. And you're going to leave it a little bit loose because when you do set this lock nut down, it's going to tighten it some. And this takes a few minutes to get it right because you'll tighten it down and you'll notice that it's too tight now. So we got to break it back loose, back off that inside nut a little bit, tighten it back. You can see it's still a little bit too tight. So that's what you want, just a little bit of tension, not too much, not too little, and then you don't want the four thousandths of an inch to be able to fit in there. So you can test like that. That feels pretty good. Now you can spin the engine over a few times once you get both those set, and then get it back at top dead center, let it go a little bit past it, then you can recheck. Um, I always do that about three times just to make sure you got them in uh, all set right. These are billet aluminum and stainless steel bolts and they slide on like that and dress up your engine. I think they look freaking sweet on here. So I'm putting them on the valve cover and pretty much anywhere else I can use them on this engine. So after a poop ton of work, uh, the engine's done. I went ahead and put the Go Power Sports uh, chain guard on it, which I had painted with bed liner and then did the green over top. And I did the Go Power Sports throttle plate with a pulse pump. I think it looks pretty sick with that green hose. That's like nuclear green. And I cut the some slits in the side cover and mounted a catch can on the side of the the flywheel shroud. I think that looks pretty sweet. I mean, a lot going on, but I think it looks awesome. And I am going to cut a piece of uh, larger fuel line to put over this to protect it from the heat of the head. But uh, it's pretty sweet. The throttle is all hooked up. And we just need to install it on the, the track. Which awaits it. Oh, they didn't even know he's here. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Ah, look at Lonnie. And this isn't the first time Lonnie's seen the garage, but first time, you know, Completely really being done. in it. Yeah. And it's huge. I mean, you can tell right there. I mean, just how massive it is. That's two drift tracks in there, and they're pretty huge. They're and they big. look tiny on camera. Yeah, they're as big as a street go kart. I mean, not the front end, but. Yeah, and look at the mess still in here. I mean, it's crazy. There's some leftover insulation. We still have one slat to do on the insulation, which is right there. Um, we're going to finish it over the weekend, but. Uh, Finally filming in the new garage. Oh, yeah, and it's. Oh, man, it's, it's so nice. nice. Yeah, I've done run, ran some laps around to get my, you know, exercise for the day. But <laughs> yeah, cardio. this. Yeah, my cardio. But the engine is uh it's pretty much done now we have to do the other drift track i'm going to do a full in-depth video on this go power sports engine plate it's like 15 dollars or so less than the arc one and it works on uh hemi engines which the arc does not you have to bend it but i think it looks pretty sweet looks freaking sick on there that green is popping i mean it matches the front wheel perfectly what do you think old lawn squeezy i like it i like it a lot we're putting the chain on now we're going to tension the chain all up and then we can uh, put the new sleeves on the tire we're also going to mount this go power sports aluminum gas tank uh, i'm going to drill some holes in the frame there and then i'm going to have to weld a piece of flat stock going from this bar to that back bar for these other bolt holes to lay on and then we can have our tank and i'm going to put a 90 fuel fitting on there and of course we run the pulse pump everything from go power sports the top plate with this throttle mechanism uh the pulse pump the green line there'll be links in the description of where to get it on amazon but looks sick for sure that it does can't wait to ride it yeah i still haven't ago. got to ride ride it stock so this is going to be oh yeah and they need wider tires or wider axle for stability when you spin it around it does want to kind of tip on you not horribly but if I put about a four more four more inches of axle on it and those wide tires, it would be perfect and it would just look better. Those little four and a half just look dinky on this bit, you know, with the big front tire and this big drift track. And these fenders, I like the fenders, but unfortunately they're probably gonna have to go because the tires are gonna stick out past them. I mean we could adapt the fenders to it, but I mean really, we'll just probably get rid of them. But it looks pretty sweet. So now I'm gonna get everything ready to weld that piece of angle or a piece of flat stock in there and get that gas tank mounted. 
So we got the chain tension up and the motor tightened down and off camera Lonnie slid these old sleeves off. You can see that one was ripped uh, almost all the way through. This one, I mean, still had a tiny bit of life left in it, but it was time to be changed. You can tell the thickness difference uh, right there. That's one ride. Yeah, and on rough asphalt though. Yeah. I mean, if you're on decent concrete, a lot of parking lots are concrete now. And uh, they your probably sleeves. last a long time on concrete. Oh yeah. So uh, we need the, to drift it in here. We can try. Break it in the garage. It would have to be the the performance engine because I don't think that other one. Yeah. Uh, so we how we got this one installed was just pulled the valve stem out. If you don't have a valve stem tool, you need to get one. They're probably a dollar on Amazon. Links will be in the description, of course. And that'll let every bit of the air out. And we took a block of wood, laid over top of the drift sleeve, and just hammered it down with a uh, with a mallet. I'm gonna have to help Lonnie, but uh, show you the starting of it. Just push it down. I'm gonna try to put it in the same groove. Just like that. All right. <laughs> that was all Lonnie's <laughs> Uh These sleeves are different than most. They have like little ribs on the inside to hold them on the tire to keep them from spinning on the tire, which is makes it a lot harder to put them on. <laughs> yeah, I mean it makes it make sure you ain't gonna spin a sleeve, uh, you know, on the tire. Only bad thing is, yeah, one ride. I have a set of sleeves where we're riding at. That's a uh, that kind of sucks. Cause these things aren't cheap. If you've ever looked at the price of what people try to sell sleeves, of course we're going to experiment some. So basically, you just beat the far out of it until <laughs> yeah. it goes on. Hold that side. <laughs> <laughs> the other one went on way easier than this. <laughs> We should have got that one on camera. Pull the camera out, everything starts sucking. Usually it gets me hurt too, so. Yeah, <laughs> Lonnie, the rubber mouth's gonna bounce back. Hit him <laughs> right in the mouth. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to put a bracket in for this gas tank. Oh, look at that spider leg cobweb concoction. So I got two welded in a piece of flat stock. Where'd it go? Right here to bolt the gas tank to. What's funny is this is part of the packaging for this uh, Coleman drift track, so it's already coming in handy. I'm gonna grind some right there, grind some right there, and I'm gonna get to finally try out my new 25 amp plug for my welder. Uh, let me throw. Oh, that's cool. Where'd you get these green things? I bought them a long time ago for the Super Scoop. Super Scoop was supposed to be done in neon green. I think it looks sick. It looks like nuclear waste. So I'm gonna cover up my engine, so you know none of the goodness gets welded on or. That nice welding apron you've never worn. I wore it quite a bit when I first got it. Thank you very a much. A year ago. Yeah, it just sucks protecting your body. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grind this paint up and get ready to weld it. So yeah, I'm putting that bar in there and this gas tank will set uh, set right on it. I need to actually move it over some. Maybe right there. Okay. I can throw a couple ticky tacks down right there. And she will be golden. There we go. You think that'll work? What the H? There we go. So I'm gonna use a thread inserter. I've showed these on other videos. These things are super handy. You can buy these thread inserts for a hundred of them, like $10. And then you can buy this tool, I think for like $30. Just make sure whatever bolts you use, you know, if you're using metric or standard to buy the right thread inserter. I thought that this would come with uh, metric and standard, but it does not. So what I did was I welded this piece of flat stock that was actually part of the packaging for this drift truck. In right there, I got to drill two holes. Now I drilled this hole and I've already put a thread insert there um, so we can bolt that 
tank down, which is right there, that aluminum go power sports tank. So thread insert, you just thread the end on, slot it down in the hole, and squeeze the dickens out of it. Then you just unthread this end. And now I have a quarter 20 coarse thread threads in there. Now I can uh, bolt the tank up there, mark the flat stock, drill the hole, and then run our fuel line. And I believe that's it. Unless, do you think we should try the thumb throttle on this one? If you want. I'm, I'm still debating the thumb throttle. I know a lot of drifting people use uh, on these drift trucks use thumb throttle. So let me know in the comments if you drift a drift truck and if it helps. One thing we're gonna do for sure is put a wider axle on this at a later time. Right now we're just wanting to go out and rip them. That's how we fuel up here. just needs fuel in it and we can go take these things out and ride them Lonnie's gonna ride the stock one and I'm sure you'll eventually ride the yeah the, once he gets used to it but uh gonna be a massive difference that's for sure with these parts huge difference it looks freaking sweet with those yeah. hoses the whole chain guard the go power sports fuel cap or fuel cap fuel tank and uh, the oil catch can I think it all looks awesome really digging it and that's not a ton of gas but that's a good thing about a drift track you're normally just going to be you know in a parking lot so uh, you can take one of those pieces of flat stock weld it fit perfect i didn't have to trim it or nothing i just cleaned up the paint laid that thing down put two beads on each side and you could use bolts and nuts but uh, luckily i have a thread inserter which made uh made my life a little bit easier we are of course going to be modifying the other one later but for now lonnie it's really good to learn on a stock one and then uh, Lonnie can evolve to we building another one for him to ride. So we got the ride all done, but the video ended up being too long. So you're gonna see that probably next Monday. Uh, Lonnie did awesome on learning how to ride these. It was really handy having someone that's rode one and figured them out, being able to guide you for sure. I wish we'd have had someone one there, but uh, we already took the motor off of the other one to build it uh lonnie did ride the stock one for a while but he as soon as he was ready we threw him on the the built one and it was a million times better we also have a third drift truck <clears throat> that we haven't really showed on camera we've already pulled the uh, engine off of it and we're going to do a special engine on this one uh very soon so two of them will have the stock motors with the performance parts and then the other one will have our uh um, an engine go power sports is coming out with very soon so a lot more drift videos to come uh, don't forget we got this gusset shirt on sale until the third it's a pre-sale this is my favorite shirt we are coming out with the rips not shirt uh at the first of december sometime but this one's on pre-sale right now so uh go buy them up i love these shirts and also the stickers will be for sale very soon uh, we also have a Christmas card we're doing. If you want to do the Christmas card, uh, it's five dollars. You can email me or message me on Facebook or Instagram, and uh, we can get all that information to you how to go about getting that. But yeah, so stay tuned. You'll see us getting to uh, rip these things. We got some good footage of it, and uh, Lonnie ended up doing awesome on them. So we'll be doing some sweet tandems uh, next time we go out and ride. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you Friday. Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini-bike parts. 
And when making your purchase, use the Red Beard discount code in the upper right hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Help support our channel with some merch by going to rbgcarts.com. We have shirts, stickers, and hats, and we're adding new designs all the time. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.